In number 63, we want to determine the intervals on which the function g of t equals ln of 3t squared plus 1 is concave up and concave down. Okay, so uh, we know what we need to do here. We need to find a second derivative of this function. Uh, we need to find all critical values of second order critical values of this function by setting that second derivative equal to zero, solving for t in this case, put those numbers on a number line, test some intervals, and then we will see where this thing is concave up and concave down. But the very first thing we need to do is we need to take a second derivative of the function. Okay, so let's find the second derivative. Um, the first derivative, g prime of t, is going to equal, well, I have ln of something, so the derivative of ln of something is 1 over what's inside times the derivative of what's inside, which is 6t. If you would prefer to write it this way, that's fine. It's 6t over 3t squared plus 1. Okay, so that's a first derivative. Notice that if I want to take a second derivative, and get g double prime of t, then I'm going to have to use the quotient rule, because this is the quotient of two things. So I've got the bottom, 3t squared plus 1, times the derivative of the top, which is 6, minus the top, which is 6t, times the derivative of the bottom, which is 6t, over the bottom, 3t squared plus 1, quantity squared. Okay, <clears throat> um, this is kind of a mess, so I'd like to clean it up just a little bit. So let's move up here, and we've got that g double prime of t is equal to, let's expand this a little bit, it might be easier to work with. So I've got 6 times 3t squared, I'm going to distribute the 6, and so I get 18t squared, 18t squared, uh, plus 6, minus 36t squared, all over 3t squared plus 1 squared, 3t squared plus 1 quantity squared. All right, on top, I see right now that I'm going to get a... Uh, 18t squared minus 36t squared is minus 18t squared. So I could rewrite. So this is g double prime of t is equal to, um, and I could even factor out a 6, but maybe I should take that in the next step. So I've got negative 18t squared plus 6 over 3t squared plus 1 squared. If I wanted to here, um, I could factor something out, but I don't think I need to. I think right now I'm good to go. What I need is I want to know where is the second derivative equal to zero? In other words, where is the top equal to zero? Or where is the bottom equal to zero? And right off the bat, I can see this bottom, that's not zero, right? Because the bottom cannot be zero. It's always going to be positive. Not only is it squared, but this thing is a positive number plus a positive number. That's never zero. Okay, This could be zero, but plus one, it's not. So uh, all I have to really deal with then is where is the top zero? In other words, where is zero equal to negative 18 t squared plus 6? Or where is 18 t squared equal to 6? Or where is t squared equal to 6 over 18? But that's just 1 over 3. And that means that t would be equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 third. And these are my second order critical points. Plus or minus the square root of one third. 
All right, so let's put these things on a number line and look at them a little bit. Uh, I'll erase a little bit of this over here. Uh, let's see, we still need my second derivative, but I suppose that this guy qualifies as my second derivative. So let's look at him. That's my second derivative simplified. And I'm going to put these guys on a number line. So let's draw our number line over here. So here's a number line. Remember, we're using second derivative. And our second order critical points were minus 1 over the square root of 3 and positive 1 over the square root of 3. Now we want to test some points into our second derivative to find out if these guys are positive or negative. Now, I could go through the whole process of plugging in, or I could just try to figure it out in my head. Look at the bottom of the second derivative. I just said this before, but it's worth noting. It's always positive, right? There's no way that the bottom here is ever going to be negative, so I don't really need to worry about it. I just need to figure out, is the top positive or negative? And that will get the job done for me. So if I'm testing something way over here, like let's take something big like negative 10. Well, negative 10 squared is 100. 100 times negative 18 is a big negative number, plus 6 is still negative. So things over here must be negative. So notice I didn't actually plug it in uh, by hand. I just used my head for a second and said, if I have a number over here, is it going to be positive or negative? And it's quite clearly negative, so I don't need to do a lot of work. What if I plug in 0? Remember, the bottom doesn't matter. It's always positive. So if I plug in 0, that's 0, and I get positive 6 over a positive. That's positive. <coughs> so on this interval, I get positive values. Over here, let's take something like 10. 10 squared is 100 times negative 18 is negative 100, uh, 1,800 plus 6 is a very big negative number. So we get negatives. Remember, negatives mean concave down or up. Well, it means concave down. Negatives mean concave down. Positives mean concave up. And now I'm just ready to write down my answer. I have figured out where my function is concave up and down using um, the critical points of the second derivative. And so I can say that f is concave down on, it's concave down from negative infinity all the way to negative 1 over root 3, and it's concave down from 1 over root 3 to positive infinity. Also, f is concave up on the interval from negative 1 over root 3 to 1 over root 3. That's my answer.